Hey, it's Eddie, and welcome to another edition of Stuff and Things. We're back here at the Dome Shaped Underground House, and today we're going to discuss waterproofing. Okay, so you'll notice in the uh, next bit of the video that uh, I am actually hanging on a rope and that's actually how I nailed down the waterproofing. <laughs> Basically what we do on the arch section, I would start at the top, I would nail the top section in and just roll it off and then I would rappel down and nail it uh, everywhere along the seams where they overlapped. Obviously you don't have to do it that way. I found that that was the easiest way to do it. Um, we talked about trying to get a boom lift in here. Boom lift would have been kind of difficult to maneuver. The other problem is with the boom lift, you're in a cage, the cage gets in the way. I'm not sure that would have made it easier. We just decided that the easiest thing to do was to repel. I know how to repel. It's not that big of a deal. Um, if you don't know how to repel, go to a rock climbing place and learn. It's not that difficult. Um, basically, I was wearing a harness, clipped in. I would repel down a certain amount, lock myself off, start uh, nailing everything I could reach, unhook, repel down another three or four feet, lock it back in, and continue to nail. We found that was the easiest way to do it. I'm sure there's other ways of doing it. Um, that's just what worked best for us. As you can see, the waterproofing is mostly done. There's an area up in the top there that we haven't finished, partially because uh, we can't really reach it. 
What we're going to end up doing is backfilling this whole area about 10 or 15 feet. Then when I get up to that point, then I can continue the waterproofing up. It's just how it kind of worked out. Um, the area up there was very difficult to get to safely, so we decided that we'll just fill up a certain area of dirt to a certain elevation, and we can get to that. So basically, this stuff is a 30 millimeter vitrothane impregnated rubberized membrane. And as you'll notice, it's a black sheet. It's about three to four feet wide, comes in, I think, 24 foot long rolls. And we've cut it into shorter sections simply because we're trying to put a flat object onto a curved structure. And if you try to use sheets that are too long on the dome section, uh, you'll end up with a lot of wrinkles, which you don't want. You want this thing to be fairly close. You're gonna get some wrinkles. There's a little bit of wrinkles here and there. The weight of the dirt should push that back in and should be okay. You've also got tape here. We tape all the seams and, we're, and we tape over the nail holes that we use to nail this. This is nailed to the concrete dome using a concrete nailer and I use one inch nails or one and a half inch nails depending on how many layers of uh, membrane I'm going through. If I'm only going through two, two layers, I use one inch nails. If I've got to go through three or more because I've got a section where a bunch of pieces overlap, I'll use inch and a half nails because the one inch nails will punch through and tear it all apart. So let me show you how we actually do the nailing. Okay, so I'm gonna nail up a couple of scrap pieces here just to show you kind of how it works. It's pretty simple. It's our ram set nail gun that uses these little tr strip charges. You're gonna wanna use one of these and not one of the ones where you have to individually put each charge in because that will drive you absolutely insane because we ended up doing, I think it was a couple thousand, I think we were approaching 3,000, maybe 4,000 nails in this entire structure. So here's how it works. Definitely want headphones, this thing is really loud. So we just throw a couple of nails in to hold it up. I'm only gonna throw one in. Uh, when we put the next layer next to it, we're gonna overlap, and you wanna overlap by about four inches. That's uh, kind of generally the general rule of thumb, four to six inches minimum. And then, And it's that simple. Okay, so now that we've got this piece nailed up, obviously we would have problem with protrusions, uh, water getting through these protrusions and whatnot. So now that we have this up, we have to obviously cover all these because water would get through here. So what we do is we have this seam tape that is pretty sticky stuff. So we wanna wipe this down good, get it clean. I kept a rag with me. Lay this on and overlap it. Now, as you can see, we've overlapped. You can kind of see where the nail hole nail holes are. Sometimes what will happen is you'll get parts where this will peel up because it didn't stick right. What you'll want to do on that case, if if any sections peel up, and I've gone around the dome, and, and I'll probably find more as I'm working on it. I'll put another piece over it. And you want to lay these also like shingles. So if I was going to have another piece below this, I would slide a piece underneath here. Same thing goes with the tape. You want to lay them like shingles so that the overlap is this way, not this way, so water doesn't get in. All of this will now be covered with a drain mat. We haven't put the drain mat on the dome because it's fairly lightweight material and the wind will actually pick it up and take off with it. So what I'm going to do is cut short pieces and duct tape it to the dome just before I backfill so that the dirt holds it in place. But I don't want to lay it all on here because we get a lot of weird winds around here and the wind actually kind of blows around this house and we get these sort of whirlwinds that are in here. It's been interesting, it picks up stuff and blows it up and over and anyways, so that's why we're doing it this way. Okay, another thing you might notice is that in the corners there's a lot of taping and a lot of cut pieces. And the reason for that is you have to use smaller pieces when you start getting lots of curves and lots of angles meeting. When you're on a flat section like this, it's pretty simple. Even on the dome, you can use larger pieces, but when you get into these corners where you've got curves bending in two different directions or sometimes three different directions, the, really the only way to do it is with smaller pieces 
nail them in, and a lot of tape. Um, if you try to use full-size pieces, what you're going to find is that you're going to have a lot of gaps behind it, and you don't want gaps because when you start putting dirt against this thing and the weight of the dirt starts pushing on it, it will tear it loose. And if it tears it loose, you're going to have a point where it's going to leak. So you want this flat. Little wrinkles, not a big deal, but you want it relatively flat. So that's why you'll see a lot of cuts and a lot of tape uh, in some of these tight, tight areas. It's also a good reason why when your shotcrete guy is shooting it to try to get those curves and angles as smooth as possible and as uniform as possible because the more jagged they are when it comes time to waterproofing the more cutting and the more taping and the more nailing you're going to have to do. Hope that helps. Good luck with your dome.